should say this evening. <laughs> yeah, evening for us, morning for you. Yeah, Stas was telling me it's it's pretty cold and windy there today. It is. Yeah. I think it might even snow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think it's snowing now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really? Yes, a little bit. Yep. Oh. It's it, it's already starting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was I was just telling Stas we're having really nice weather today. Is uh, it's going to be fourteen degrees today? Wow. Yeah, and tomorrow is seventeen. Good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Almost yeah. summer. Yeah, it uh, it's feeling more like spring now for sure. <laughs> so this is good. So it's, it's great. Yeah, we, it looks like we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, and we great. still have three minutes, maybe some other people. Yeah, we'll wait, if, we'll wait here until we, until we get going. That's great. Yeah. So you've had a busy day today, huh, Christy? Yes, we have so many events today. Oh, somebody's here. <laughs> we have some workshops. And uh, Maslena, oh, 11 participants. Yeah, wow. Is it the record already? That's <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. It's great to see so many people joining. If you have a camera, please click on the camera. Okay. 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 Some more. Yeah. We are popular today. <laughs> yeah, it's a big day today. Advertisement is working. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the power of advertising. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Welcome. That's nice. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, super. Wonderful. Well, for everyone who's waiting, uh, thank you. I'm really happy to see so many people on the, uh, on the call today. Uh, and for those who don't know, uh, my name is Jeff and uh, I live in the state of Washington which is really far away from Ukraine. <laughs> it's, it's on the other side of the world. It's uh, 10 hours earlier. So uh, it's almost seven o'clock in the morning here in the state of Washington. And uh, oh, oh, Christy, I see even more coming. So can, you can admit those if uh, you want. Yes, yes, I see. Thank you. Yeah, wow, this is great. <laughs> well, well done, Stas. Well done, Stas's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hope you'll have live conversation today. <laughs> so yeah, so I was saying, so it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning here in the state of Washington. It's uh, it's actually a beautiful spring day. It's going to be sunny and fourteen degrees, and uh, it's going to be a nice day to be outdoors. I wish it was the same in Kropivnitsky, but unfortunately, it's not today. <laughs> But I hope, uh, I hope the weekend brings some better weather and I hope spring arrives. So today we're going to talk about uh, driving a car or driving a truck or driving whatever in America and how that's different than driving um, in Ukraine. Now, uh, I'm sure lots of you have experience either as a driver or as a passenger when you're driving in uh, on the roads in uh, Kropivnitsky and all around Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be a pretty crazy experience. <laughs> and sometimes uh, the roads are not perfect. <laughs> and so uh, we'll show you a little bit, a little bit different view. And thanks again, by the way, thanks everybody for uh, joining this morning. I see we have lots of participants, which is just great. That's super. So let me go ahead and start the presentation. I have a, a PowerPoint presentation that I'm gonna put up here. So let's do that. And I'm gonna do my share screen. There it is. 
Okay, so it should be coming up. Yes. Here we are. Everyone see that okay? Yep. Great. Here we are, driving in America. And uh, some of you may have seen pictures like this before, but we have a lot of big, what we call big highways. Sometimes we call them highways. Other times you'll hear them called freeways. But these are, you know, obviously very big roads with lots of lanes, lots of connection points to other highways. And you see these all over. You'll see them uh, almost uh, in, every, in every state, certainly. And uh, they go all over the country. And I'll show you a map later to uh, give you an idea of just how many people or how many different roads actually interconnect in the United States. Uh, but before you drive, and for many of the folks who are on the call this morning, you need to get your driver's license. I'm sure you have to go through a process in Ukraine, and I'm a little familiar with what you have to do in Ukraine to do that. But here in the United States, uh, you have some choices. You know, you can teach yourself, or you can have someone in your family, maybe, or a friend teach you how to uh, drive. You can go to a private school or a private uh, company that teaches you how to drive. Or in the United States, you can take your driving classes at high school. High school actually provides uh, free classes for every student to learn how to drive. Uh, each state has their own laws. And that's a really unusual part about the United States. Uh, it's not like the same law applies in one state as it does in another. So before you leave your own state and go to different states, it's a good idea to check just to be sure you understand the driving laws in each state. Uh, normally, you can begin to drive uh, with a driver's permit, it's called. It's sort of the practice driving uh, uh, document that you can have in the United States. And you can get that uh, depending upon the state that you live in. Uh, at the age of 14, 14, 15, or 16, it depends on the state. Uh, and, and then th these numbers are pretty amazing. The US population now is about 331 million people. And there are 287 million cars in America. <laughs> so yeah, almost a car for every person. And sometimes it feels like every car is on the road. Sometimes the roads can be pretty crazy, pretty crowded with, with drivers. This uh, particular picture is right near where I live. It's a, uh, it's a highway that goes across this uh, Lake Washington, it's called, this lake. And this is up next to the city of Seattle. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, this is the road that starts in Seattle and goes all the way across the United States and finishes in New York City. And uh, so it's, it's called Interstate Highway Number 90. It's a great big highway that goes uh, about 5,000 kilometers across the United States that starts here in Seattle. So you decide you wanna get your license, you decide you wanna learn how to drive, so you go to class. And this is a picture of a, a high school class and uh, at the high school, uh, you take your driver's classes. You learn about the laws. You learn about uh, you know, various safety measures of driving. So if you were a United States high school student, you at some point, you would take a driver education class at your high school. And this is what it would look like. Uh, most schools also have these uh, rooms where they have uh, sort of a specialized uh, arrangement with these, uh, uh, these driving, uh, you know, practice devices, and they're all connected to a computer, and then it shows up on the screen what you're doing, and the instructor can go around and correct you. This is sort of a, a nice way to start learning how to drive before you actually go out and drive a car <laughs> and maybe get into some trouble. So it's a good, it's a good way to practice before you actually drive. And this is sort of a picture that you would see in a, in a high school here in America. Whoops, let's see here. Yeah, 
So this next one shows you going to, uh, you, you go for your eye test to get your permit. You wanna learn how to drive. So you go to the special Department of Motor Vehicles. Sometimes you will hear this called DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. And every, every town and city around the United States has one. And you go and you have your eyes test, you take a written test, you know, you are in this case, a computer test. Uh, and then uh, you go out and you practice your driving. Uh, every high school has their own practice car. They have a car that's set up for a student driver. And uh, you'll have the teacher here, you know, and you'll have the students in the car. And it's one of the things you can, uh, like I said, you can do at high school. So that, that's kind of fun. Uh, it also shows here, uh, you'll see that in the United States, seat, belt, seat belts are required. And I think they're required also in Ukraine, but not always, it's not always a law that is followed. Christy, what's, this, what's the story with seatbelts these days? Is that becoming more uh, important? Excuse me, can you repeat, please? <laughs> That's okay. Is, uh, is wearing a seatbelt now becoming more common or more important yes, in Ukraine? Yes, sure. for sure, yes, exactly. Good. They, incre they increased the fines also lately for not using the seatbelts. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, but we also have such an issue that there are a lot of cars that were manufactured long ago. Yeah. And uh, some of those might not have the seat belts like because of their uh, because they were manufactured without them. Yeah. So uh, that is the issue also right now. So they are thinking what to do with those drivers and those cars. Right. Yeah. Because right That's now it's required also to use the seat belts for the uh, for the heavy trucks like for the uh, for the commercial trucks. Mm -hmm. So you have to use the seat belt over there. But uh, on the new trucks, yes. But for example, on old ones, they never had the seat belts. Right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I'm happy to see that seatbelts are becoming, it's becoming more important to wear them and that they're starting to enforce that law. So that's good. But you, yeah. you, you, you really must, <laughs> must work on people, on, on the drivers and passengers. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, in my family, when we are in, uh, when we are in the car, so we are uh, fastened, everyone. But for example, uh, if someone from my friends is sitting in the car, so they, really often like forget to fasten the seat belts. Right. So I have to remind them every time when, when I'm driving. So yeah, you are in my car, so just please do whatever you need. We need to be, we need to be safe and sure everyone. That is, that is a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> it's a requirement in every state in the United States and the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the fine or the ticket or the amount of money that you would have to pay uh, if a policeman stopped you, it's very high. It depends on the state that you're in, but in most states, it's $200 up to maybe $500. So yeah, it's it's a lot of money. So you, most people wear their seatbelts and it's very unusual to not see someone wearing their seatbelts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is what you would, uh, this is what you would do. You'd have your little driver's class and you would, uh, you know, while you're in high school, you'd be doing your driver's lesson during the day. And, and then, of course, after you're ready and you want to go, you go for your test, your driver's test. And uh, it's usually uh, a tester sits with a clipboard and a pen and a pencil. And they ask you to do certain things with your car. You know, can you park your car? Can you make a left turn? Can you make a right turn? You know, all these different things. And, uh, and then you either pass or you don't pass. So after it's all done and hopefully you are successful and you've got your license, they, uh, each state issues their own driver's license. It's not like a, uh, uh, one license for the whole United States. So here's an example of a, of a state, it's a small state in the eastern part of the United States. It's called Massachusetts, not an easy one to pronounce. And this is uh, where, where the city of Boston is. Some of you may have heard of Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, here's an example of what their driver's license looks like. 
there are a few things that are interesting about this license. Uh, one is that it has this, you see this unusual uh, background, or this unusual mm -hmm. pattern, yeah. And this, this is designed so that you can't easily make a copy of the license. It's, it's a digitized uh, picture, a picture that is made with a computer. And then it's put onto this background, sort of like money, you know, the new currency that's used today has some of the same features in it. And it's very hard to make a copy or to make a counterfeit of this. It also has, uh, it shows uh, that this person was in the army. So you see the veteran. Mm -hmm. and that's an indicator to the policeman uh, who looks at it. Oh, okay, this guy was in the, was in the army. Uh, it shows uh, his height. It shows, uh, you'll see also the, 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 uh, the day that was given and the day it's um, uh, date of issue expiration. Yeah, 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 the date of issue. And then the date of expiration is up here. I'm sorry, date of issue and date of expiration is here. And there's one thing that um, I, should, I should point out to everyone on the call this uh, today is in the United States, we write dates differently than in, in much, of the, much of the world. We put the month first and then the day. And I know in most of the world, they put the day first and then the month. So yeah, that's yeah, another thing that the United States does differently. <laughs> yeah, and also on the, driver, uh, on the driver's license, there might be a note that if the person is the organ donor. Yes, yes, and there it is right here. You'll see this donor uh, down here. Yep. And here's an indicator if you're, unfortunately, if you were in an accident and it was very serious and you die, then you indicate on your license that you are willing to have your uh, body organs used to save another life. And so they, they rush your body to the hospital. If they have someone who needs a heart or lungs or kidney or some part of your body, you have given them permission to do that. And so it's not a nice thing to think about, obviously, but it's a great thing to have. And I have that on my license. I have an organ donor on my license. So yeah, so that's, that's an example of, uh, of what a driver's license. Each state has a little different design, uh, but they all, they look very, very similar to this. Jeff, I have one more question. As far sure. as I know, like some states may issue um, driver, driver's license also for the people who are visiting the states, but they are not the citizens. Like if yes. you are on the tourist visa, yes. so you can, you can also get the driver's license, right? Absolutely, that's absolutely correct. And you go in and you take the, the computer test, you know, and usually they don't make you do a driver's test, but they mm -hmm. will have you do the computer test to be sure that you understand the laws in that state. And then after you take the computer test and hopefully you pass the computer test, then they give you this temporary license that you use while you're there. Yes. But it's not for the oldest states, right? It just, uh, as far as I know, like New York or and some other, like a couple Correct. of uh, couple more. Correct. Correct. Now, if you're going to be there for a long period of time, then you can go and get a driver's license. You don't have to be a citizen. You have a driver's license. So if you're going to be in the United States for a long period of time, uh, uh, and you have a, let's say you have a visa that allows you to stay for a long period of time, you can go and get a driver's license and you can stay. Uh, I know, uh, well, I, I know two people on the call, Stas and Christy know of a, a teacher that we both ha uh, know, knew from our days at the academy. And she and her family are living in the United States. They're not citizens, but they have driver's licenses and they have all the documents that they need to go you know, to get that done. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really, a, it's very nice to be able to have that license. I have a question. Sure. Uh, what about other countries? Can you use your driving license in another country? In yeah, your I, ha I have, you know, I, I've used my license going to other countries to drive, but I think it, I think it will depend on that country, you know, if they have a, uh, if they accept a United States license. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, I actually I actually used mine in Japan of all places, and uh, yeah, 
I was amazed that they accepted it, but they did. And that was kind of unusual. Yeah, that was kind of unusual because in Japan, they drive on the left side of the road. You know, it's the opposite. Uh, but I got used to it after a little while. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, any, any other questions on the driver's license? Okay, let's move on. So you also have to have an insurance card and everyone is required to have driver's insurance in America. Uh, almost every state requires it. And uh, certainly it's kind of crazy to drive without insurance in the United States. And you have to carry a proof of insurance card. That's a requirement in the United States. And so here's an example of what that insurance card would look like. It shows the policy number and it shows you know, your name and all this information. And it shows that you have all the different types of insurance, uh, bodily injury or property damage, uh, medical insurance, uh, this uh, comprehensive means sort of general insurance for anything that might happen. And then uh, collision insurance for your car and for the car that might be involved in the accident. So it shows that every insurance card has this sort of information uh, on it, and it shows uh, and it shows the state and it shows you know uh, the general information about the insurance company. Is that a requirement in Ukraine? Is insurance required? Yeah. Yeah, but it's a bit uh, a bit simpler. Uh, so, like, I have the printed insurance uh, with me in my car, but it's uh, it's not that the detail. So basically, I have the policy number, I have VIN number of my car, uh, mm -hmm. my name, and, and like my personal information, and the uh, basically, and that's it. So I don't have it uh, detailed for bodily, for like general, for collision, and for everything. But right. if, if they need something, they will. Uh, they can just check on the on the policy number, and then they will ah, have everything that they need. I see. Okay. Yeah, you're uh, in the United States. You're required to have that. Uh, and if a policeman stops you for any reason, they always ask. They always ask for three documents. They'll ask for your insur your insurance card, your driver's license, and your vehicle registration. You know the vehicle mm -hmm. document. And if you don't have one of those you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, things don't go well after that. So you always have those uh, three documents uh, when you're driving. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, so now it's time to buy a new car. <laughs> and so we've got a lot of choices in the United States uh, because we're a large country and a big economy. Uh, many companies uh, offer their cars here, although I, I don't think you can buy a Lada here. I, I don't think that's available. <laughs> they but, have UAS right now in California. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> but as you can see, I mean, we've got a lot of car companies that operate, uh, you know, here in the United States. And um, it's kind of interesting. This number is a pretty amazing. It's 17 million new cars are sold in the United States every year. That's a, that was a pretty big number. I was surprised it was that many. And of course, a lot of people buy used cars. You know, they're not always buying a new car. Um, one of the things that's different between the United States and Ukraine is the uh, interest rate or the uh, percentage rate that you would uh, have for buying a car because our economy is stronger than that in Ukraine our loan rates are much lower so you can get a bank loan for um, it can even be as low as zero percent and right now it's about up to maybe four uh, percent based upon your age your driver's license your driver's rating and also your what they call credit rating in other words uh, do you pay off your your loans if you if you borrow money do you pay it back and do you pay it back on time and uh, in the United States there's a uh, there are three big companies that keep track of every person's credit rating they're called credit raging rating agencies 
and uh, they can go in and see if you've paid back your loans, uh, what we call loan uh, in the United States, if you've paid that loan back on time. And if you have, you have a good credit rating. And if you have a good credit rating, you get a low, a low bank rate, you know, a low, a low loan rate. So that's a good thing to have. The loans here are usually shorter than they are in Ukraine. Here it's from two years to six years. It's unusual to see a loan more than six years for a, for a car. But I think in Ukraine, it's often much longer, yes? Yeah, it, it might be like up to 10 years or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, I think Americans keep their cars for a shorter period of time. And, uh, and what Barbara and I do is we're part of this trade-in program. You may have seen this before called trade-in. And you, so you, you buy a new car, you drive it for three years, and then you go back to the, the dealer, to the store, and you give them the car, and then they give you a new car. Of course, you pay for it, but you get a pretty large value if your car is in good condition for the car that you trade in. And so you just do this every three years. And this is what Barbara and I do. So we, we only keep our cars for about three years. And then we trade them in for a new car. We also have something called leasing. This word here. Do you have that in uh, Ukraine? Christy, is that something you do? I think we don't have it. You know, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we mainly have that for the agriculture, uh, for agricultural techniques, like for combines and tractors. But it's uh, become like becoming more and more popular also with the cars. Yeah, yeah, and and what leasing is is it's it's essentially renting the car, or it's you're paying for the the use of the car for a period of time, and then you bring the car back. So you pay a monthly price for having that car, but you don't own the car, and then after five years or after three years or something, you take the car back, they check to be sure it's in good condition, and then that's it, you're done. You know, you, there's no money that comes back to you because you never really owned the car. So it's, it's popular in America, uh, and that would make sense that it, that it would be used in Ukraine for agricultural or maybe for big trucks or something like that. Uh, but it's, it's quite popular here in America. So, types of roads. Oh my goodness, <clears throat> we have got so many different kinds of roads in America, and it has to do with who actually maintains the road, who built the road, who maintains the road, and who um, is responsible for it. You know, if there's uh, winter, if there's snow, who clears the snow from the road? If there's yeah. damage to the road, yeah, who who does the repairs? So. We have this multi-level government in America. So you have local country roads that are part of the area that you live in, and they're usually small roads like this two, with two lanes. Then there are town and city roads, and those are two lanes, four lanes, even six lanes sometimes. They're pretty big roads sometimes. Then there's county roads, and a county in America is similar to oblast in Ukraine, sort of the same size. And county roads belong to the county, two, four, six lanes. And then there are, of course, state roads. And state road, you know, we have 50 states in the United States. And there, those roads are also two, four, and six lanes, but they tend to be in better condition because the state has more money than the county. So the state roads tend to be pretty good. And then you have the federal interstate highways. So this is the national government. And those roads are big roads. And they're four lanes up to 20 lanes. Huge, huge highways that go across the United States. And it also includes uh, bridges, tunnels, and highways that are called Toll. Toll means you have to pay uh, money to drive on it. 
So for certain bridges, not all, but certain bridges, you have to pay some money to drive on it. Also certain tunnels, we have these tunnels that go under either under a city or under a river or something else. And those tunnels sometimes you have to pay to drive on. And then there are certain highways or certain uh, large roads that you also have to pay a toll on, but it's not common. They're, they're not everywhere. They're only in certain places. This road, by the way, uh, this is in California along the Pacific Ocean. And uh, I've pedaled my bicycle on this road. Uh, this is, uh, it's a beautiful part of the, of the, of, uh, the coast of California. Okay, so here's that map I wanted to show you of the federal interstate highways, those big roads between four and 20 lanes. And you can see there's more of them in the East Coast than there are in the West. And that's because there's more population here. This part of the United States has more people. And so you have more roads as a result because there's more cities, there's more business, there's more of everything. So here is New York, for example, here is Chicago. Uh, here's obviously Texas. And we talked on a recent, a recent call, Texas right here. This is the size of Ukraine. So to get an idea of how large Ukraine is compared to the United States, you could take Ukraine and put it right here. So Kiev would be here, Lviv would be here, you know, uh, you know, Odessa would be here. So you, you have a pretty good idea of, uh, of sort of the relative size. So of course, out here in the West, a lot of this is uh, empty land. It's desert, it's big open plains. So you don't have as many of the highways. Uh, I live up here in Seattle and uh, we often drive down this interstate number five. And this is San Francisco right here. And then we go further down and this is Los Angeles. This is where Los Angeles is. So it gives you a good idea of where the highways go. And these road signs, wow. It's important to know these road numbers because they, they can tell you a lot about the road. So whenever you see a road sign that has these three little, these three little bumps on the top, that means it's a, it's a federal highway. It's owned by the United States government. But whenever you see them in red and blue, that means they're the big super highways. They're really fast roads. And they almost always say north or south, you know, what direction that road is going. And then of course they have numbers. But states and counties also have them. And you'll see that on the next picture. <laughs> these, are, these are an example of some of the different state roads. And you can see every state has their own design. So here's Florida, you know, shaped like Florida. Here's Louisiana. Here's Nevada. And, and then other states have a, a theme. So here's, here's Nebraska with the old wagon. And here's, uh, oh, here's a good one. Here's Idaho, the shape of Idaho. And here's, a, here's an interesting one way over here. This is on a Native American reservation, an Indian reservation. And they have their own shape that represents that particular Indian tribe. So you'll see each state has different ones. Here's my state of Washington. It's an outline of the uh, president, George Washington. <laughs> And it's really kind of funny when you think about it. <laughs> so every state has different ones. They even have special roads for bicycle riders like me. You know, I'm a, I, I love to ride my bike. And you'll see roads here that uh, there's a separate little small road next to a, a large road. And those are marked with signs for bicycles. And you'll see that they're, yeah, they have a little bicycle sign on. <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. So it's like bicycle, uh, bicycle lane on that road, yeah. on that road yeah. or just? Yeah, bicycle lanes and bicycle roads. And, uh, and they're almost always marked with some sort of symbol with a bicycle, so you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's kind of amazing. All these different signs. And then, of course, 
you have these big open highways in the in the in the southwest part of the United States. So this area is down by Arizona and uh, New Mexico and Colorado and uh, Nevada. You'll see these this sort of uh, land in those areas. And uh, this road, I've been on this road. I have actually pedaled my bicycle on this road, believe it or not. And it's it goes across the state of Arizona. Uh, and uh, you can see there's not much out there. It's pretty quiet. <laughs> and then, of course, we talked about this um, having to pay oh. a fee. Yeah, the toll road, we call it. And uh, in many places in the United States now, you can buy an electronic uh, car. Yeah, and you, you put that on your car and uh, in these areas that have easy pass, you see where it says easy, easy, you drive your car through that and there's a device right here, you can see them. They read this device on your car and then you don't have to stop and, and give money. And then it charges it to your credit card, you know, and that way, yeah, you know, each month you just pay the the amount that you owe for that month. So it makes it easier for drivers who are driving all the time. Yeah, in other cases, if you're not, if you don't have that and you're just driving occasionally, then uh, you have another lane where, where you can use exact change if you have some coins that are the right amount. And then there's an, usually another lane over here that lets you give them any money and they will give you uh, money back from your larger bills. Why do you need to pay for that road? Yeah, I'm sorry. Why I'm sorry, do you Christy? need to pay? Why do you need to pay? Oh, yeah. Well, usually those roads that have to pay, they use that money. money yeah, to keep the road in great condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and you'll see this in the East Coast because so many people and so many drivers, and certain roads, they want to be sure they're in the best condition. So people can drive, you know, quickly and there's no problems. So you'll see that, uh, yeah, you'll see these, uh, they call them toll booths. It's a hard word to say, uh, a toll booth. And you, you, like I say, you either drive through slowly or stop and give money. Yep. And uh, here's a pretty famous bridge that we looked at on a call uh, previous, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. That's a bridge that you have to pay to drive over. And uh, you can see here, they have toll booths here for that as well. You stop and you, uh, in most cases, you stop and give money for, for this one. And here's an example of just a typical sort of local state highway, maybe going from one town to another. And uh, you'll see them, you'll see these all over America. <clears throat> They'll have six lanes or maybe four lanes. And this is what this is what you see in America if you're driving. So you have to get used to these kinds of uh, these kinds of conditions. <clears throat> but these are my favorite roads. These are the fun roads. This is in the state of Arizona. How much fun would it be to drive on this road? <laughs> this is great stuff. <laughs> it's just a road that's going out through the desert. And there's no one there, and you don't see another house, you don't see another town. It's just a road and yourself. Unlike this picture, <laughs> and this is a picture I think in San Diego, uh, in uh, California, and you can see here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So six lanes in each direction. So a twelve-lane uh, highway. This is pretty common in the bigger cities. Now here's one of the best parts about driving in America on the highways. For our Ukrainian visitors that we've had come to stay with us in America, when we take a car trip, they discover that we have these rest areas and they're, they're all over the highways of America. They're all free. You don't have to pay to use them. As a matter of fact, to go to a restroom or to a bathroom anywhere in America, you don't pay anything. You never have to pay to use a restroom in America. 
And it, the same is for on these highways. They have rest areas. They have areas for trucks to park, areas for their cars to park. And you'll see the signs here. And then they have hot water, cold water. Many of them have showers. So you can get clean, take a shower if you need to. They'll have uh, uh, information about the area, free maps. They'll often have, uh, uh, you'll see here a picture. Here's an ex example of a, of a large rest area on a highway. Big parking area, big areas. They have little areas for picnics if you brought food in the car and you wanted to stop. Most of the rest areas offer free coffee. Coffee is free because they want you to drink coffee to stay awake. <laughs> So you don't have a problem on the highway. So uh, these are very common. You see them all over the highways here. And you, if you're really tired, you can stop and just park your car and close your eyes and rest. And that's why they call it a rest area. Uh, many of them offer free Wi-Fi. If you want to check your messages and your cell phone uh, isn't in, uh, connected to a cell tower. So yeah, so you have it's a you see them everywhere. Here's an example of a high, the highway map we looked at before. And it shows all of the rest areas. Each of these little dots is a rest area. You can see, we, we have them everywhere. <laughs> They're usually about every 30 to 50 kilometers. So if you're driving for a half hour or for an hour, and you want to stop, and you need to go to the restroom, or you just want to take a rest, this is what we have. It's really, it's very nice. It's a great way to drive. Because all of these highways that you see, none of them have stop signs or stop lights. There's no stopping on these highways. You just go. So uh, yeah, it's very, it's very convenient to have these. Yeah, here's another example of a rest area. And you can see all of them have these uh, roads that go back onto the highway so you don't have to stop. You don't have to go through a town or a stop sign or a stoplight. And uh, yeah, they all have little picnic areas, a place to have something to eat. Uh, they're, you know, they're actually quite comfortable inside. Uh, and these are all free. You don't pay to use them at all. And they're maintained by the state that you're in. So if this one was in the state of Washington, the state of Washington pays to maintain this facility. So they're cleaned every day. Someone cuts the grass. Someone makes sure that the road condition is good. This is, this is very typical in America and you'll see them all over the United States. But you still pay for them while paying taxes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, is, this is part of your tax payment. And we have uh, four different uh, taxes in the United States. So we have a uh, uh, city tax. If you live in some cities, charge a tax. If you live in a county, this uh, sort of like Oblast, you pay a county tax. When you, that state that you live in, you pay a state tax. And for the federal government, you also pay a federal tax. So we have four different taxes. Yeah, yeah. And that's, and this is where the money goes. This is those four different types of roads, all of those things, all of that tax money, that's where the money goes. At, at least you see the result. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I have memories of driving through Smila uh, over the years. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> it, it's a bit better right now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, how is the, by the way, yeah, how are the roads in, <clears throat> excuse me, how are the roads in Krovig right now, in, in Krovig this year? Are they better? Now it's becoming better, you know. The government's uh, doing something. At least oh, some. good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Better. That's great. Oh, that's good. That's good and to hear. We hope, we hope it's not just in the center of our town. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, like there, uh, there was a joke in the uh, on Facebook, like in, in Ukraine. Okay, Snow told that goodbye, guys. I'm going. 
And then Winter <laughs> said, okay, wait for me. I'm also going. And then the roads, hey, wait for me, guys. I I'm with you. So yeah, after the winter, when snow melted and there were like really cold weather. So there, there are a lot of holes on the streets right now. At least they started doing something. Yeah, but still not, not really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I'm encouraged. I'm glad that uh, the roads are at least improving in the city, in town. Are the roads between towns, are they getting any better? Or are things improving? Uh, yeah. So the, mm -hmm. the road, to, uh, road to cave is much better right now. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have a new road to Mikolayu. So oh, basically, if, uh, if previously we had to spend about like four or five hours to get to Mikolayu, um, I was there about like a month ago. So it took me on, only about 55 minutes to get from Kropunitsky to, uh, to Mikolayu. Wow. <laughs> great new roads. Yeah, they made it like- Wow, that is great. Oh, I took that road many years ago. It was horrible. Oh, it was just not a good road. Oh, that's a great improvement. That's good to hear. Yeah. So we were, uh, we were uh, on, on our trip to Odessa in, uh, in summer and uh, it took almost six hours. Uh, yeah. and, and right now it was about like two and a half hours total from Odessa to, to Kroponetsky. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. Good. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Well, anyway, so going back to these states, you know, we have all 50 states and every state has, you know, they're very proud of their state. And like you see, when you're driving in Ukraine, you'll see, you know, entering you know, uh, Kirovgar Oblast or entering Cherkasy Oblast. Here we have states. And of course, you know, every state has their little phrase. They have their little theme. And in the state of Texas, for example, Drive friendly the Texas way. <laughs> I'm not sure how friendly it really is, but that's the idea. Here's one for the state of Utah. And for those who were on the call uh, a couple weeks ago, when we talked about the national parks. They have these amazing national parks in Utah and that famous one of the arch. So they use that as their state symbol or their state theme. So when you enter the state of Utah, you'll often see this sign. Oh, here's a good, here's an example too. Buckle up, meaning put on your seatbelt. It's the law. And way over here in the corner, you'll see the speed limit. And of course we're miles per hour, not kilometers <laughs> per hour. So 45 uh, miles per hour. It's about like 80, 80 something? It's about 80, yeah. About 75 or 80 kilometers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a great one. I love this one. The state wow. of Wyoming. Yeah, this is a great state sign. And it's got the cowboy. It's, it's really a cowboy country. You know, this, the Wyoming is cowboy country. And so you've got the cowboy on his uh, horse, and bucking horse, and uh, the beautiful mountains of the state. So yeah, yeah good idea. And here's another example uh, of Illinois, the state of Illinois. And they've done something very clever. They have this outline of a face, and it's the it's the face of Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. the 16th, uh, you know, very famous president. And um, that's where he was born. He was born in Illinois. So they have sort of made this. They call it the land of Lincoln. So you'll see this on every state. It's kind of fun, you know. I like this one. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> little state of Delaware. It's a small state, uh, not too far from Washington, D.C., on the eastern part. Uh, they call it the Small Wonder, which is, I think, wonderful. <laughs> That's a super name. And it's the first state. It was the first state uh, that uh, we had in our United States way back in the 1700s when, when the United States was formed. So, yeah. So eventually you might have a problem when you're driving. You might be driving too fast. You might have missed a stop sign. You might have done something. And the policeman will drive up behind you. You'll see the lights flashing. It's not like in Ukraine where they stand on the side of the road with their baton. It's very different in America. They, they don't have that here. They'll be in their car and you'll see the lights flash in your mirror. You know, you're driving and you'll see the lights flash. 
And that's the indication that you're going to be stopped by the policeman. So you pull over to the side, policeman gets out of the car, but before they get out of the car, they're gonna know everything about you. And I'll tell you why here in just a moment. But we have all different kinds of policemen. Again, count, uh, city policemen, county policemen, state policemen, and federal. We have four different types. Uh, they have radar. Are they using radar now in Ukraine to see the speed of your car? Do they have that now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see that in almost every, uh, every police car here. They also use helicopters to look down on busy highways to try to find people driving too fast. Uh, and of course, if you're driving too fast and you get a ticket, you know, you have to pay a fine, that makes your insurance go up. The insurance companies are notified anytime someone gets a ticket. So your next time you pay for your insurance, your insurance price goes up. So it's a reason to not, not go fast. And of course, like we talked about, seatbelts are required. So <clears throat> on these driver's tests in every state, you'll have all the different signs, right? <laughs> and so you have to identify all these signs you know, correctly before you're allowed to pass the test. And here's an example of a few of them. So here's a typical American police car. You'll notice that they all have these on the front of their car. It's called a, a bumper. And it's the ability to, if a car is disabled and doesn't work, they can get behind the car and push the car off the highway so that cars can, can go by. So you'll, you'll see this on every American police car. And every police car in America now, virtually every one, they have radar, they also have a, a computer with a display screen that's connected to the cellular internet. And they can find out everything about you before they even stop your car. They have a huge database, they all have access to it. So they know if you have other driver's tickets, they know if you're a criminal, they know, they know everything about you <laughs> before they even stop to ask for your license and registration and insurance. And like I said, they have helicopters up there. They have special devices, radar on the bottom of these helicopters. And if they see a car going too fast, they radio down to the, to the police and they say, oh, stop this car and give them a ticket. They also have a lot of the cities now are putting in these special cameras. Uh, if someone drives through a red light, you know, uh, if they make a, uh, if they drive too quickly and they go through the red light, the camera will take a picture of your car and of your license plate. And then it will look up the license plate in the database and you will get a, a traffic ticket in the mail. Uh, a few days later. And then you will have to pay that uh, ticket either online or by sending, uh, sending money back to them. The same is also with the, with the tolls. If you, are, if you are going through the toll booth without yes. paying. Yes, yep, same thing. And now these look like toll booths, but this is actually to cross the international border. So some of you might know this flag, the Canadian flag. And this is, uh, you know, we have a huge border with Canada. And so if you're driving north, uh, of course now the borders are closed because of COVID. But if you're driving north, uh, normally you would have to stop and you'd have to show your passport and any other documents about your car to drive up into Canada. And you have these all across our border. You know, we have this huge 5,000 kilometer border with Canada. So we, we have lots of these places where you cross the border. And the same with our Southern neighbor, Mexico, same thing. Lots of, <laughs> it's a very long border. So there are lots of border checkpoints. And again, this is where you show your passport and your, and your information about your car. And it looks more strict than the one with Canada. Yeah. 
the one in Mexico is is <clears throat> it's definitely stricter. Yeah. This is actually I know this border very well. I've gone through it several times. Our daughter uh, Katie uh, worked uh, still does work for the U.S. State Department, and she worked in the city in Mexico for a long time. This is called Ciudad Juarez, which means the city of Juarez. And it's in uh, it's on the other side of the border from Texas, in western Texas. And it's a big city of about four million people. And she worked at our U.S. embassy uh, located here in Mexico. So I remember driving through this border many times over the years. Jeff, I'm sorry. Can I say something? Sure. I'm sorry, I have to go, you know that. <laughs> but you still, Oh, yes. But oh, you yes, still, we're running. You still have time, really. You can stay here and talk more. So I, I just want to say thank you. And thanks, everybody, who joined today. Дуже дякуємо всім, хто сьогодні до нас долучився. Але в нас просто час закривати бібліотеку у шостій. Але в кого є час, залишайтеся і продовжуйте говорити. So, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Ah. But I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, no worries. Thank you very, very much, Christy. Thank you as well. Okay. Yeah, and we'll, we'll keep going. Thanks, everybody, for staying on. 